it. Oh, don't we just love Alan Parsons? This is called Pipeline. I love this song. Gets me back to my old days in the music biz. Love Alan Parsons. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, just a quick thing I want to talk to you about tonight. I don't try to make it quick, but uh, I call it insanity compensation. And I think that's the best way to say it because so many retailers I've dealt with in the last few years, their 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 vision sometimes is set on how can I cut payroll, and and they're worried about um, you know, eleven dollar, twelve, thirteen dollars an hour, and the price going up. And you know the point of it is is that um, it, listen, this is not the time of the year to be worried about payroll. I know that sounds cavalier on my part. There's only one thing to be worried about this time of the year and that's the top line you got to worry about the top line and what brings you the top line well let me get into a few things and show you here what i'm talking about um okay and these missed opportunities i keep talking about and the first question that you have to answer is that what kind of a business are we in uh what do tanning salons really sell tanning yeah we we sell tanning great you know indulgence yes we're an indulgence product that's true uh, do we sell escape? How many times have we had to wake somebody up when they're snoring in a room? Happens all the time. But uh, do we sell self-esteem? Absolutely we do. It's a great industry to be part of because we do sell self-esteem more than anything else. People leave us feeling better about themselves, their appearance, their confidence goes up. I think it's a wonderful industry to be part of. How many industries do you, can you think of? It's certainly not the Wendy's drive-up window. We sell self-esteem. And I want to show you a quick slide here uh, that I think is really telling. I'm not going to go through all the numbers because if you're watching this, you can pause this. Uh, this is on um, uh, YouTube. Uh, you can pause this. Um, it'll be also in the forums too. But you can pause this and look at some of the numbers. But what this tells you from the National Association for Self-Esteem is we have, and this is specifically aimed at, at women here because that's where most of our customers are. But the self-esteem is a real huge problem <clears throat> problem in this country and other countries as well. Uh, but when Andy Warhol said years ago, everybody gets their 15 minutes of fame, today with our social media, it's like 15 seconds of fame. And so that's why so many people are on Facebook every day. And I went to the jar, went to the rest, of the, <laughs> went to the store for a jar of pickles. Why that's important, I think, to somebody else, I don't know. But Facebook, we keep reinforcing each other, and that's what people want. They want to be reinforced. They want to be reaffirmed. They want relevance. This is, by the way, one of the gross demo largest growing demographics among Facebook users is old farts like me, because we get to a certain age. I'm going to be 73 this uh, week, and you get to a point where you're wondering how relative are you, uh, relative how relevant relevant are you now in life. My four kids are grown, my grandchildren, my youngest granddaughter is 17, okay? So, but there's a lot of self-esteem issues and we are we are so good at helping people with their self-esteem. But this is what we do getting back to compensation and I want to, I really want to make this point hard. You see this bed that's on the screen? This is what we call a sun dash. Somewhere in the East Coast, there's a warehouse of probably 300 of these, probably still trying to sell them to consumers. Now, if you're going to start a tanning salon, you could probably find that person that has that warehouse. You could probably buy these things. He'd probably sell them to you if you agreed to take them away, he or she or whatever. But you could buy this. But the problem is nobody would use it. See, you know the cost and the value of good equipment. Look at this baby here, the Ergoline Open Sun 1050, a definitely a Hall of Fame tanning bed. One of the best that's ever been out there. It looks like something's landed and it gets used. I mean, the ROI on this bed is crazy. And I'm not trying to do a commercial for Ergoline. Uh, there's some great KBL beds. There's PC Tan has got some good stuff. Heartland had, uh, I particularly like Heartland's uh, spray booth, their Pura. But there's some really good stuff out there. But you see, you know that this thing is going to cost you some big bucks. And you don't even wince at that. You think, this is not going to work. This is going to work. Okay. And so then I looked this up, and this was a salon front from a few years ago $7 a square foot. Whoa. Ah, yeah, I'll take that. It's in the war zone, and no one's going to come to it. 
So you know that there's a value there. You can't have a salon that looks like that. You want a salon that looks like this. And this is a baby. This is beautiful. I think this might be in Austin, Texas, but I'm not sure. Okay. And will this draw tanning, folks? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, is it 20 to $25 a square foot? Some markets, of course, something that looks that gorgeous is going to be even more. And so typically, you know, we're looking at a very successful modern day tanning salon, not something that we saw 20 years ago where all you had to do is put a 40 foot banner up and it said tanning and it did. We had a guy in New Jersey 25 years ago that had a muffler changing place and he had three tanning beds in the back and we could do that. Can't do that anymore. This is an indulgence experience. We got to give something to people for their time and their money. So it was a three to $400,000 for a build out, maybe. So you see, we know all the values. And of that kind of thing, things that we feel that we don't have any control over, but we feel we do have control over people. So here's what I say to them, invest in build out and equipment, but even more in tanning, passionate, mature salon staff. People that really believe in the industry, uh, really love it, and they recognize that it's self-esteem that they're delivering, this is the kind of people we should get, but you're not gonna get them at minimum wage or a buck above minimum wage. If you think that you're you're saving yourself some money, I'm going to show you uh, a case study here in just a minute, a real salon from a year ago to this year, and I'll show you what happened. Uh, anyway, nothing produces highly committed tanners than great quality staff. It just, there's no way to get around it. These two ladies I've got in here, Lindsay White, I've been working with her for a lot of years. She started out with Chili Peppers Tan Detroit as a salesperson. Then as a shift manager, an assistant manager, a manager, then a district manager, now she's the GM. This woman is just as passionate about the tanning business as she was 11 years ago. But I can assure you, 11 years ago, she never worked for minimum wage, even a buck above minimum wage. She's too sharp. Kristen Smithers here, who just became a salon owner about a year, or year and a half ago, whatever. This lady is, she's, she's killer, and she now owns her own salon. But again, neither one of these ladies are going to work for cheap wages. A cheap wages isn't always defined as minimum wage. Now, I know that it's different in different markets. Some markets you've got to start at nine or ten dollars. I'm just going to go to this this uh, case study I've got here, and I'm going to show you that this was um, where they were paying nine dollars an hour, and I, it just didn't work. And I'm going to show you what we end up doing. First of all, though, let's look at these two ladies, and this is what we should have as a model, not what they're getting paid. No, I don't mean that, but uh, this is what the, what you should be looking for in high quality, tanning, passionate, mature salon staff. They're out there. Unfortunately, a lot of people in this industry don't know how to get them. They go on Indeed or ZipRecruiter or Craigslist or other garbage, leave it alone. And I'm gonna give another webinar here pretty soon where I'm gonna talk about recruiting, interviewing, hiring, and I'll talk specifically about what you should do with that. Use your email. You use your email. You know that you have people that like tanning, like your tanning. They live only a few miles away, right? Uh, you don't have to worry about the, the excuse of, well, um, you know, my boyfriend ate my car or whatever. You may have dealt with them in salon. You know something about their personality. And number five, the advantage of going through email database is that they may have interacted with other employees and you can get feedback from the rest of your staff. So, but here's what we do. We take all of this great setup and build out that we've got, and we hand it over to somebody that should not have it. So, and what do a lot of salons do? Little preparation and interviewing, little investment in the recruiting process, small requirements for candidates is their heart beating, insignificant rewards and compensation plans. When I see people that are paying $2 for an EFT, regardless of level, I just know they need my help. Uh, and you know, generally in our industry, we hire too fast, we terminate too slow. So the hiring process and the recruiting process is critical or else we're hiring under the gun. And we take that three, $400,000 in the build out, we turn that big investment over to, and who do we give it to? That, that's who we give it to because they're available. They're available and, and your answer to me is, well, John, I can buy this, I can get it cheap. You can't get good tanning beds, good locations, good build out, a good a line of, of lotions, you, you can't get all of that cheap. This or those, 
those are the most important assets you have because if they're not selling and working for you, your salon's going nowhere. I have a chain right now that I've worked with off and on for the last four years that is unfortunately failing miserably. They've lost 40% of their business in the last four years because they continue to give giant dollars to their senior executives in the company and their people that, the most important people, people like you're looking at there on the screen, look more like that, you know, maybe not quite that bad, but they're paying them at a dollar above minimum wage. It's, it's insane. It's compensation insanity. So look at this, this uh, uh, single salon case study. Okay, and you can stop this, of course. You can put it on pause and you can read this, but single salon case study. Four employees, where you could read it there, working for 16 hours, an average of 20 hours a week, 1,280 hours, or $11,520 in payroll at $9 an hour. And just go down and you look at the scenario here. Okay, this is critical. Look at your employees that are problem employees. Go back and look at people that did not work out for you. If they left you in four months like these did, if they left you in six or seven months, notoriously, we see this on a lot of campus salons, in and out and in and out. If you look at those people that terminated with you in a very short period of time, and you look at their per tan average or per sale average, depending upon the software that you've got, if you look at that and then just look at the average of what the salon does, not the top sellers, but the average. Well, this is what we did here. And they were $3, these, these four employees were $3 below the salon's average PTA. And what did that cost us? It cost us almost $29,000 in lost sales. And it's just simple math. Just take those people that are a problem and do some uh, multiplication on it, and you're going to see that you're going to be losing your butt by hiring people that are cheap. You shouldn't do that. It's, again, you want some sun dash, uh, tanning salon or tanning beds, whatever. You want a crappy location, you can do that. But you know the value of that. And if you take all of that and turn over to an idiot, somebody that calls off on their shift all the time or sits there on their Facebook or with their boyfriend, you know, that doesn't sell anything, you're, you're, you're killing yourself. And I see this all the time. Single salons, chains, I see it all the time. Let's get by as cheap as we can and who we hire. What you want to hire is certified selling killers. That's what you want. You want people that every time they're at the front counter, they want to sell, sell, sell. Well, look at what we did. We offered $2 an hour more. We went from 9 to $11 an hour. And look what happened. In the same 16 weeks this year, this is what happened. Or excuse me. And from 2018 to 2019, look what happened. We generated... You go to the bottom there, $35,000 in additional revenue off of those employees. Now, you can afford to pay a lot more in wages when you've got that. The increased wages that we paid uh, brought us up to, um, I think it was $13,000 or something like that. But we got back $35,000 because we had people that loved tanning, knew how to sell, knew how to interact with uh, customers. I tell you, it, it just... It, it just bugs me that every time I take over and work with a, a new client, I'm, I'm seeing this kind of ridiculous thinking. Oh, I'm going to go buy this new big KBL that looked like it uh, landed from Venus. That's great. We need eye candy with uh, beds. But the best eye candy you can buy, the people that work for you behind the counter, just remember, they are the atomizer that you see in Macy's and Nordstrom's. They, they're the human atomizer. You can go into Macy's and Nordstrom. You can sp spritz a little a new Lauren product on you. You know what it is. But the one that's going to spritz the value and the experience of your salon is those ladies behind the counter. Now, somebody's going to say, well, John, if I offer $11 an hour, I'm just going to get the same idiots. Yes, you are. You are if you don't know how to recruit, interview, and hire. And that's going to be one of my next a little mini webinars. So thanks for listening to an old guy here and uh, uh, just look for some more coming up here. We've got one coming up, I think next week on computer software where we can show you the, the numbers that you should be looking at. You don't have to be looking at 20 numbers. Even if you look at four, six numbers, you can tell what your individual salespeople and what your salon is doing. So hope that this has been helpful to you and uh, look forward to seeing you on another one of my uh, mini rants. Bye-bye.